Welcome to the Comic Fest 2017. <laughs> Joining me today is Nelson De Castro. We're so happy to have you here. So, how is it feeling so far? Uh, it's great. I have to admit, I love it. Uh, I've, this is my first time in uh, Trinidad and Tobago, and I, it's excellent. I, everyone here is so nice, and uh, Chavi took us yesterday to go have some coconut water, as a matter of fact. <laughs> that was the first thing we went to, the, the big roundabout that you had here, and the first thing I had was some awesome, uh, awesome coconut water, and, and we got to eat the coconut out with the little shell part. That was awesome. That was awesome. I'm loving it. You're getting the full experience so far. So, Mr. Nelson is from America. And he's a multimedia artist. He does everything from inking to penciling to coloring. I mean, there's almost nothing he does not do. But he's not just an artist who does art. He also teaches art uh, in America. And he has worked on Robocop, Green Lantern. I've been working for Marvel, DC, and Dark Horse for about 27 years now. And there's almost no title, I mean, I haven't worked on at some point, where Daredevil, Venom, Inhumans, Superman, Action Comics, um, uh, X-Men, I mean, you, you name it, at some point, at some, some book, I've, I've pretty much done it. The only thing I haven't worked on, a major title, was uh, Batman, actually. That was the one like kind of major title that I haven't really uh, worked on, but I've... You know, a, a lot of freelance artists do this. They jump around from one book to another like that. Um, so f after 27 years, it's been a lot of time. It's, it's actually too much to keep track of. I, for I forget. Like, I'll be honest. It's, you, you know, so many different ones. But uh, And that's fun, though, because it keeps get to work on all the different characters. So that's kind of nice. I like that. Well, one of the questions I had was... The, the fact that you are able to do so many different uh, arts, well, you have so many art skills, that is very important. How is it that you, that you transitioned to that? Did you start out just penciling and then you went to inking? Because there's so many that you do now. When I was in high school, I started to do a lot of paintings. Um, my friends were, liked heavy metal music and stuff, and we would, I would paint their denim jackets I would paint the album covers on the on the on the denim jackets it was the it was a style at the time in the 80s it was a big thing and I got a lot of practice painting doing that um, so when I was in in uh, when I went to college I studied at the School of Visual Arts in New York where, where I now teach um, I was doing a lot of painted stuff as well as studying comic book art uh, so my first jobs actually were doing painted covers rather than comic book art and I started actually selling work to Marvel Comics um, while I was in school and I used some of my projects in school to sell those to Marvel as a matter of fact so I got to get paid to do my homework which is right it's really cool no one likes doing homework unless you're an artist then you like doing your homework and then when you get paid then it's really good you know uh, so that was that's what broke me in and then I was able to also then start to do pencil and ink work and stuff like that doing the interior storytelling of comics and stuff as well so, but it was the paintings that actually got me my first works. Yeah, excellent. So you have published your very own creator-owned uh, work for Dark Horse Comics in the past. How did it feel when that happened? Because that's kind of a lot of people don't even know if it's possible. Sometimes it feels just like this. Ready? Yes. You know, I mean it. It was a great thing. I was still very young at the time. I think I was um, 20, 23, I think, at the time. or 20, you know, I was very, very young. And uh, at the time, Dark Horse was looking for a lot of uh, new comics, creator-owned stuff. Um, they were really breaking out with the licensed things like Terminator and Aliens. And those comics were doing very, very well. Um, and they were just looking for all these... Uh, other creators they're uh, very uh, generous that way 
So it was a very easy sell. I talked to Randy Stradley, who was the editor in chief at the time there, and he was like, "Yeah, great." And uh, I, I I couldn't believe it. Actually, I was I was really uh, happy about that. And it was uh, it, it is yeah. And it was um, it was a, a wonderful sort of milestone that happened so early. And and I think after that it changed. It got harder for people to to sell their creator own things like that. And it was a wonderful experience. And uh, just coming up with your own characters. And I didn't realize how hard it was, too, to, to make decisions. And just what you want to name your character, what you name your supporting characters, well, you know, um, all their origins, where they come from, all these details. You'd, you know, you start thinking of a story, but then there's all these other things that you have to think of as well. And it starts to get kind of really complicated before you know it. But, but it was really fun. And it was, uh, it was an amazing time. And I, and I, well, as you can see, ladies and gentlemen, comics is a very detailed thing. A lot of people don't understand just how much goes on behind the scenes. And I wanted to ask you about that. The, the actual process of making comics, is there anything in particular that you say stands out about the comic book world? Comics and films are, are very closely related. Um, in any film, any major film, usually they make basically the storyboard when they do that is a comic book. It's a breakdown of the scenes basically in a comic book format. Um, in fact, my friend Jimmy Palmiotti, who writes Harley Quinn for DC, um, he has a company called Paper Films that makes comics. Because that's what they are. They're films on paper. you know. Uh, and I think that's one of the reasons why a lot of comic book movies got made is that a lot of the producers could read the comic book the, you know, the production, the, uh, the, the people with the money could read it and see, they kind of got an idea of what the film would be like by reading the comic, because that's kind of what it is. So I think it's very closely related to those things. Um, so I, I, I find that comics are different in a way that you have to find the sort of most important scene or the most important aspect of that scene, and you have to capture it in that one panel, right? Where in a film you can kind of capture things throughout a scene, in comics you have to pick those little moments for each panel and kind of pick the most important part and break that and, and tell a nice smooth story. Because the most important thing is to tell a beautiful story, to get the reader to lose themselves inside the story, to you know, open up that cover and start you know, going through there and not really thinking about the comic, thinking about the story. You want them... Like just when you go see a film, you want the right the you when you lose yourself in the movie, that's when you know it's a good movie. When you get in there and you you just you're not thinking about the film, you're thinking about whether Tom Cruise is going to escape with the microfilm. Like, is he going to get away? Are the ninjas going to get him? Like, you know that that's if you can if you can do that as a filmmaker or a comic book uh, creator, then you won. If you got them, you pulled them in. So there's it's a very close relation. Um, and I the, the one of the things for comic artists though and a lot of people don't realize is if you are the creator you have to do everything you have to be very skilled at all the things in, in any film you have a, a writer you have the actors you have the screen uh, editors you know, the, the screenplay editors the cinematographers the costume designers the lighting designers sound effects guys um, the continuity directors you have all these people who do that and you have to do all of that so when you're doing a story that takes place and it's uh, about Napoleon, you have to make sure you get all the costumes right, right? All the clothing has to be correct to that period. If you go back in time to ancient China, you have to get all those costumes, all the architecture has to, you're the location scout, right? When the film guys, they find where do we shoot this movie about the emperor, right? You have to find where that would be. So you have to do all those things. So you have to be very well schooled in all of these things to create that uh, job, and you have to do it all yourself. But it's great because you have the control all yourself, and I, I find that's, that's really a lot of fun to have that kind of control. You can create anything, you know? Right? Now, as a teacher, I'm asking you, <laughs> Mr. Teacher, uh, what is the one thing that you believe artists should have? Well, the, the most important thing, period, is to, is to love what you do, right? If you, I think the only, only the only people who do this do it because they love it more than anything else. You know, um, to me, it's part of who I am. If I don't, um, if I'm not drawing something at some point, I start to feel kind of strange, you know, like I, if I go too long without sitting down and creating something. Um, 
it's, it's a weird feeling. I look forward to getting up in the morning and getting my coffee and, and sitting down to do work. And a lot of people don't look forward to going to work in the morning, you know. And I look forward to getting up to go see what what cool things we can draw today. You know, that space battle between the aliens or, you know, uh, whether it's the robotic war or, you know, whatever fun, you know, flights of fantasy that you can have in comics. Um, it's a wonderful thing. So I, the most important thing is that desire to chase what you love um, and that it's part of, of you. And if you have that, the rest, I think, comes along with it because then you, you have the interest in studying hard, learning um, how to draw all of these things. And a comic book artist has to be able to draw anything, right? Anatomy is extremely important. You know, whenever all the superhero guys are wearing their suits. Um, but everything. I mean, if you're drawing a, a, a World War II story, you might have to draw an old Mercedes Benz from 1932, Right or those kinds of things. all these different things you and and you have to make it look good, right? Uh, but the most important thing for comics is to tell a flowing story. Again, you can you can be a, not the greatest artist, but if you tell a beautiful flowing story, you're going to be successful at in comics. Yeah. You can friend me on Facebook. I'm Nelson Faro De Castro on Facebook. Uh, F A R O is my middle name, and so if you. If you search me there and go ahead and friend me, I would love to have more friends from Trinidad and Tobago. And also, I am doing a, uh, a new project called Megadroid, which is a heavy metal record. And then all the songs on the record have these characters of the songs, and they're, we're going to do comics based on all those characters. They're, they're all together in a universe. So you can go to freemegadroid.com. And you can actually download some sample songs and some stuff there. And you can see our Kickstarter we're going to do for that. So it's going to be a full record with comics. And it's going to be something different, right? Because comics, I want to make, I'm, they've been around for a long time. I'm trying to do something different. And I think this is going to be a really interesting, uh, it's going to be a really interesting project. So check that out, freemegadroid.com. Thank you so much for your time. It's an honor to have you here. It's an honor for me to be here. I had the greatest time. Everyone in Trinidad is so nice. I've. It's, it is my pleasure and my honor to be here, let me tell you.